Imagine a messy desk covered in papers. Some are important, some are not, and none are in order. Finding one document takes longer than it should because everything is scattered. Now imagine the same papers neatly sorted, by date, by name, or by priority. Finding anything becomes quick and calm. That is what sorting does in programs. It takes a collection of values and puts them in a clear order, so everything else works faster and easier. Sorting helps with searching, grouping, reporting, and almost any task where order matters. In this session, the goal is to understand sorting algorithms in simple terms, with everyday examples, clear trade-offs, and a sense of when to use which one. We will keep it simple and use small examples to make the flow natural. A sorting algorithm is simply a method for arranging items in a list into a desired order, smallest to largest, A to Z, or a custom rule. Different methods have different strengths. Some are easy to understand but slow on big lists. Some are fast but need extra memory. A few do not even compare items. They count or group them in clever ways. We will build intuition with tiny concrete examples you can picture immediately. Let us start with bubble sort because it is the easiest to imagine. Picture the list 5, 1, 4. We compare neighbors. Five and one are in the wrong order, so swap to get. Next, compare five and four, swap to get. Then five and two, swap to get. The largest bubbled to the end. We repeat passes until no swaps are needed. It is simple and visual, like gently pushing larger bubbles to the top. But if the list is long, it keeps walking and swapping many times, which makes it slow. Bubble sort is fine for teaching and tiny cases, but not for serious workloads. Selection. Sort scans for the smallest and places it next, with we, find the smallest, one, and put it first to get, to. Now, from the remaining, auricor, the smallest is two. Place it next to get. Continue until done. It does few swaps, which can be nice for systems where swapping is expensive, but it still scans repeatedly and is slow for large inputs. Think of sorting books on a shelf by repeatedly picking the lightest book and placing it at the left. Insertion. Sort feels like how people sort playing cards. Start with the first card as sorted. Take the next card and insert it into the correct spot among the cards in your hand. Four, start with Haripwe. Insert 1 before 5 to get. Insert 4 between 1 and 5 to get. Insert 2 between 1 and 4 to get 1, 2, 4. If the input is already almost sorted, each insertion moves only a little so it is fast. For example, inserting 11 into a nearly sorted list, 1, 3, 5, 7, is just one step to the end. It is great for small lists or when new items trickle into a mostly sorted list. Those three are the simple family. They are easy to understand, but they do not scale well. For bigger data, divide and conquer methods shine. Merge. Sort splits the list into halves, sorts each half, then merges them. Take eight, three, five, four, split into, and seven, Six, one, split again until single elements. Now merge. And by comparing fronts, three is smaller, then eight, and so on. Do this for all pairs. Then merge the sorted pairs into bigger sorted lists until the whole list is sorted. The magic is the merge step. If we have, and we compare three versus four, take three, then eight versus four, take four, then eight versus five, take five. Finally, take eight to get three, four, five. Merge. Sort is steady and predictable. Great when consistency matters. The trade-off, it uses extra space while merging. Quick sort picks a pivot and partitions around it. With eight, three, five, four, choose pivot five. Partition so numbers less than five go left. Greater than 5, go right, 
then combine as left plus pivot plus right, then repeat on the left and right parts. On the left, pick pivot 3, then left plus pivot plus right. On the right, pivot 7, then left plus pivot plus right. Join them to get 1, 2, 3, 4. Quick sort is often the fastest in practice, especially with good pivot choices like median of 3, first, middle, last. It usually uses little extra memory and works in place, which is handy. Heap sort uses a heap, which you can picture as a tree that always keeps the largest item at the top. From 4, 10, 3, 5, we first build a max heap with 10 at the top. Then we repeatedly swap the top with the last element and shrink the heap. Swap 10 with 1 to get 4, 1, 3. Rebuild heap to move the next largest to the top, now 5. Swap 5 with position 4 and continue. The sorted part grows from the end. Dot, 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 10 at the end, then dot, 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 10, 5, then dot, 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 10, 5, 4, and so on. Heap sort is steady, needs little extra memory, and never collapses on worst cases. In Python, the built-in sort, list.sort or sorted, uses TimSort, a hybrid that loves real-world data. Imagine the list, 2, 3, 4, 10. The first part is already a sorted run. TimSort identifies such runs, then merges them efficiently. And for small pieces, it uses insertion sort for speed. Real data often has ordered stretches, by time, by category, by natural accumulation, and TimSort rides those patterns for speed. In day-to-day -day Python, just use the built-in sort and provide a key when needed, like sorting strings by length or file names by the number inside. Some sorts do not compare items directly. They count or use structure. Counting sort works when inputs are integers in a known, small range. Say the list is 4, 2, 2, 8, and the values range from 1 to 8. We count occurrences. 1 maps to 1, 2 maps to 2, 3 maps to 2, 4 maps to 1, 8 maps to 1. Then we reconstruct the sorted list by writing out each number as many times as it occurred to get 1, 2, 2, 3, it is very fast for limited ranges and is used inside other algorithms. Radix sort sorts integers by digits. Imagine sorting by one's place first, bucket by last digit, keeping order within buckets. After the one's place, sort again by the tens place, then hundreds. Because each pass preserves the order from the previous pass, stability, after a few passes, the list becomes fully sorted. This is powerful when the number of digits is small and fixed. Bucket sort is helpful when numbers are uniformly spread over a range like 0.0, .0 to 1.0. For example, 0 0.23 comma, 0 0.85 comma, 0 0.12 comma, 0 0.44 comma, 0 0.39 can be placed into buckets 0 0.0 to 0 0.2, 0 0.2 to 0 0.4, 0 0.4 to 0 0.6, 0 0.6 to 0 0.8, 0 0.8 to 1.0. So 0 0.12 in bucket 1, 0 0.23, and 0 0.39 in bucket 2, 0 0.44 in bucket 3, 0 0.85 in bucket 5. Sort each small bucket, insertion sort is fine, and then concatenate buckets in order to get a sorted list. If data clusters badly, performance drops, but with a nice spread, it is elegant and fast. Let us tie these to everyday tasks with tiny examples that show why the choice matters. Suppose you have file names like clip2.mp4, clip10.mp4, clip1.mp4. If you sort them lexicographically, you get clip1.mp4, clip10.mp4, clip2.mp4, which looks wrong to humans. The fix is to use the built-in sorted with a key that extracts the number. Sort by integer of the part between clip and ump on mp4. With the right key, 
Tim Sort handles it quickly and gives clip1.mp4, clip2.mp4, clip10.mp4. This shows how powerful a good key is. Imagine a leaderboard updated with new scores coming in one at a time. The list is already mostly sorted, and you insert one new score. In this case, insertion. Sort logic. Finding the correct spot for the new score and sliding a few items can be faster than resorting everything. If you batch updates, the built-in sort is still a safe bet, but it is useful to recognize when a small local insert wins. Consider merging daily logs that are already sorted by time. You do not need to resort everything from scratch. This is a perfect merge sort picture. Each day's log is a sorted list. Merging two days uses the same compare fronts and pick the smaller timestamp idea. If you have many days, keep merging pairs until all are combined. The merging is linear in total size and very efficient. For a job scheduler where you repeatedly need the next highest priority task, a heap keeps the current top task accessible. Think of tasks as priority, task underscore ID. Push tasks into a heap. Pop the highest priority when you are ready to run one. New tasks can arrive and be pushed at any time, and the heap keeps things ordered enough to always find the next one fast. If you are sorting millions of small integers in a bounded range, like test scores from 0 to 100, counting sort can be incredibly fast. Build an array of counts of size 101, then rebuild the sorted output. The approach avoids pairwise comparisons entirely and screams on that specific shape of data. When handling IDs like eight-digit numbers where digits matter, radix sort can be a good fit. Sort by ones, then tens, then hundreds, and so on, each time using a stable bucket placement. After the final digit pass, the entire list is sorted. The key idea is that each pass preserves the work of prior passes. When processing a stream of floating point values between 0 and 1 with an even spread, say, normalized confidences from a model, bucket sort can allocate values to a fixed set of buckets, sort small buckets quickly, and output a globally sorted stream with little overhead. A few practical tips keep things smooth. In Python, prefer the built-in sort for general work. It is fast, stable, and supports keys and reverse. If you need to sort complex items, use a key function. For example, sort a list of dictionaries by dictionary bracket, timestamp bracket, or by length of name. If data is nearly sorted, inserting into place works surprisingly well, especially for small updates. When memory is tight and worst case guarantees matter, heap sort style strategies or in place quick sort implementations reduce overhead. But again, in everyday code, list.sort and sorted with a good key solve most problems cleanly. It helps to carry short mental pictures. Bubble sort gently swaps neighbors until the big ones float to the end. Selection sort keeps picking the smallest to place next, like building a shelf from lightest to heaviest. Insertion sort builds a neat hand of cards by sliding each new card into place. Merge sort divides a messy pile into tiny piles and merges them back in order. Quick sort picks a pivot and forms two groups around it, repeating the trick on each side. Heap sort keeps the biggest at the top of a tree and moves it to the end, one by one. Tim sort looks for already sorted stretches and glides through real world data. Counting sort tallies how many of each value there are and lays them out directly. Radix sort orders by digits from smallest place to largest, locking order step by step. Bucket sort pours numbers into labeled bins, sorts each little pile, and pours them back. Choosing the right method depends on the shape of the data and what you need. For tiny lists and teaching, the simple family is fine with insertion. Sort the most practically useful. For big, general-purpose sorting in Python, the built-in Tim sort is almost always the right answer, especially with a clear key.
When you need consistent performance and can spare memory, Merge Sort's Steady Merging is reliable. When you want speed with low overhead and you can manage pivots well, Quick Sort shines. When worst case safety and small extra memory matter, Heap Sort is a solid friend. And when inputs meet special conditions, bounded integers, fixed length numbers, or nicely uniform distributions, Counting, Radix, and Bucket Sort unlock another level of speed. Good programs do not just compute, they arrange data so the next steps become easy. Sorting is that arrangement step. With the right simple examples in mind and a few everyday patterns at your fingertips, choosing a sorting algorithm becomes natural. Use the built-in sort first and shape it with a key. Insert smartly when the list is nearly sorted. Merge when you are combining already sorted parts. Pick quick when you want fast, in-place speed with good pivot choices. Keep a heap when the top item is all you need at any moment. And grab counting, radix, or bucket when the data shape invites them. Once this becomes habit, code feels smoother, results arrive faster, and organizing information becomes a quiet advantage instead of a constant hurdle.